Um, I typically work with golfers. Uh, that's kind of my little niche. But however, uh, this case is about a collegiate lacrosse player, a uh, 20 year old female. And I just want to highlight some of the, uh, you know, really good ways that I was able to use to car, um, you know, went back to car therapy throughout the whole rehab process. Um, you know, from immediately post-op all the way through our return to sports stuff. So just a quick overview, I'm going to talk to you guys about the patient history, we'll do a brief anatomy review, talk about the surgical procedure, and then get into uh, the intervention and how we were able to incorporate Takar therapy throughout the, uh, the whole treatment continuum. Uh, I have a couple of demonstration videos, and then we'll save some time at the end for questions. Um, admittingly, uh, I had videos of the actual patient uh, doing all of these activities. Um, However, I lost my phone. Um, my fiance was gracious enough to help me uh, re-record some of these videos. Um, so just wanted to give her a shout out. Uh, so 20 year old female college lacrosse player, um, past medical history of juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, as well as exercise induced asthma. Uh, she had a history from high school of uh, chronic left hip pain with athletic participation. A lot of things were feeling like pinching for her, uh, any sort of running, jumping, as well as hip flexion greater than 90 degrees. You know, she had that classic kind of fader um, flexion, adduction, internal rotation symptoms. She'd had a surgery in 2018, which involved a partial uh, psoas tendon release. Uh, it was determined then there was no labral involvement. However, after the surgery, she was still in a lot of pain. Uh, this was followed up by a series of two cortisone injections one into the actual hip joint itself, the other into the um, unreleased portion of the iliopsoas tendon. Now, where it gets interesting is she was cleared to uh, return to sport uh, after six months uh, by her doctor, still in a lot of pain though. A little bit of pressure, college athlete, you know, coach wanted her back on the field. She didn't really feel ready, uh, suffered a pretty serious uh, re-aggravation of this injury, um, much worse than the first time followed up with a second hip specialist um, who performed another MRI. It was noticed there was a capsular defect as well as some scarring within the, you know, and around the hip capsule. So a second surgery was performed. It's a complete psoas tendon release as well as a capsular reconstruction, which really just involved a patching of that hole. Um, there was also a shaving of a pincer lesion around the acetabulum. Uh, so she was weight bearing as tolerated for eight weeks post-op. So just a quick anatomy review. Um, you guys are familiar with kind of what we're looking at here. I uh, have the iliopsoas tendon um, as well as some of the, the capsular um, stuff around the hip. And just another picture. This is the, the pincer lesion. So again, talking about the acetabulum, a little bit of a bony overgrowth again in the second surgery. Doctor uh, shaved that down. So immediately post-op, um, the, you know, the week's about two to four, um, I'd like to point out it was an arthroscopic surgery. So I didn't really see the need to do too much with the mixed head. Um, that's the, you know, three-pronged attachment uh, that doesn't require a ground for the most superficial dermal layers of the skin. However, she did have a lot of pain anterior and laterally. Um, so the Takar setup I would start with was a CET, so the capacitive and the deep uh, CET. So we're toggling a depth of two centimeter, uh, two to three centimeters in the CET, um, three to five in the uh, deep CET. And I utilized low pulse. I wanted to reduce the thermal effect, but I did want to decrease some of the tone, calm some of her superficial pain receptor nerves and decrease some of her guarding because Per the doctor's orders, we had to get that hip moving. Um, so again, lower intensity, just to calm down the area, decrease some tone. And then from there, I utilized some adhesives, uh, one on the uh, low back, which is where left side of her low back, which was the ground, and another adhesive over the proximal anterior left thigh. I have some pictures of this setup. What was great about this setup is it allowed me to do all of my range of motion stuff, you know, passively range in the hip, as well as begin initiation of some gentle glute isometrics. Um, I even had her moving within an active range of motion uh, with that same setup, uh, all within those surgeon guidelines. This is the first video here. So this is my CET, deep CET setup. So again, I have the ground on the... 
I have the ground, an adhesive ground positioned over her left side of her low back. I'll pause on the parameters I'm using real quick. So it's a little blurry, but you can see I'm utilizing the low pulse setting here. Again, that's going to reduce the thermal effect for the patient um, as well as the dynamic. Now, I find that in my practice, uh, I use the dynamic setting a lot. I find it super beneficial to toggle between what's superficial and deep to, you know, what might be the actual pathologic tissue. Um, and then the second video is with those adhesives. So you'll see I have one adhesive over the anterior thigh, the other adhesive over the left side of her low back. I'll do a quick pause over the parameters as well so you guys can see that. So again, I'm at 20%, still toggling between the dynamic because again, there was both resistive tissue and bony tissue involved. So I wanted the mix of RET and RET plus. RET plus is gonna be better for the bone, tendon and cartilage, RET for um, you know other resistive tissue. And this is gonna play a role into when we started using the Takar in later phases of rehab, started doing a little bit of active exercise as well. And a wrap. So it's moved into like the four to eight week range. I started uh, cranking up the heat a little bit. I really wanted to work on improving blood flow, soft tissue mobility, collagen synthesis, um, relaxing her still very, very tight hip flexor musculature. So there was still about a 25% decrease in hip extension, passive range on the left side compared to the right. So I was using that CET, deep CET capacitive over the proximal quads, um, you know, the hip flexor musculature, even into the iliacus a little bit um, at about 30 to 40%. And then from there, switching to RET, RET plus, uh, same parameters, really 20 to 30% intensity. Um, and this is where we started using it a little more actively. So I have some videos that are um, pretty cool. You guys will get to see, we did, you know, the, the basics, hip abduction, hip extension, and eventually got into all isotonic hip flexion. Uh, I was also able to use that same setup. I took, I showed you guys with the adhesives, uh, while performing, you know, my joint mobilizations, passive range, um, and, and the more, the manual stuff, um, but one of my favorite things, and I point this out on just about every call that I'm on um, with you guys, is uh, the active therapy with the Takar really allows our treatments to become super specific. Uh, it allows us to selectively target the tissue we want to heat slash heal because the current's going to concentrate in the tissue with the most resistance, or in this case, the tissue that is contracting. Another super, super benefit that I can't... Uh, I can't state enough uh, just how beneficial that's been for me in, in my practice. Um, so here are some videos here. So this is just, again, I was re-recording these videos when we were first initiating the glute isometrics. Um, I had her uh, in sideline. We were doing these unilaterally, but just for the sake of the video, um, the, I, I didn't have anybody to help me record either. Um, so we were doing it bilaterally, but I have the same setup. So there is an adhesive over the anterior left thigh, the same ground adhesive over the left side of the low back. I have that current traveling through the hip flexor musculature as well as the, um, the hip joint itself. So, and then I'll, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. What's great about the adhesives is they allow us to do even some, you know, passive range of motion. Um, manual stretching, contract, relax, all that good stuff. Um, what the user, uh, what the patient in this case found was that severely less discomfort um, with the range of motion, especially early on, uh, coupled with the Takar compared to when we were doing it without it. So again, we're allowing our patients to move more with less pain. One of my favorite things about using this unit. I have one other video here that just shows a little bit of uh, some joint mobilizations I was doing. Again, you can kind of see there the adhesive still over that anterior thigh, doing a little bit of lateral gapping. Um, this was great because she had still been getting a little bit of that pinching sensation um, with flexion above 90. Using the Takar coupled with that lateral traction um, really was beneficial in helping improve that range without creating any additional uh, pinching. 
So it actually became totally symptom free for her around this time. Um, uh, let's go to the next slide. Oh, so this is just a little bit of isotonic hip abduction. It's one of my favorite setups. So again, you can see here, I have that um, adhesive clipped to the uh, left side of the low back. The other one's on the anterior portion of the left thigh. She's just going through some basic hip abduction here. I'm going to span to the parameters quickly and pause. So you can see here, I'm in the RET, RET plus dynamic setting. Again, I want to target the resistive tissue as well as the bony tissue. So that's why I have it set to dynamic. Now I'm working at an intensity of 30%. I like to point out that while I do do a lot of stuff actively with my patients and the wind back, uh, I do tend to drop the intensity a little lower. Contracting tissue is going to heat faster sometimes it becomes very hot for the patient very quickly. So something I like to point out. Um, so I'll start at 30% here. Most of the time, I will eventually drop it down to 20. Um, another thing I like to point out is that body composition plays a huge role in this as well. People that have a higher uh, percentage of muscle mass are going to heat faster than someone who may have a little bit more you know, adipose tissue. Um, so those are two little... Uh, tips I like to give when we're talking about, you know, the active to car therapy. And then what I really wanted to talk about, because I think this is an often underutilized um, accessory feature of the wind back is uh, the swap function. So weeks eight to 12, um, she was still presenting with a lot of anterior and lateral left thigh pain. It was about a 20% decrease in hip extension, active range. Uh, her gait analysis was still very very funky, um, weren't getting much push off on that left side. Um, and there was about 10 to 12% decrease in loading on the left. Um, so the Takar swap function, we like to joke in my clinic that this is the two for one happy hour special. You get uh, two currents, one price, uh, those are gonna toggle. So now what's great is it allows us to use the capacitive and the resistive in an alternating pattern. So it's going to go three seconds of capacitive followed by three seconds of resistive. Uh, what we were able to find is that this allowed us to work at a much higher level of heat. So in a passive sense, 40% uh, to better promote soft tissue mobility, collagen synthesis, vascularization, uh, you know, tissue pliability, as well as get deep within that hip joint to promote an increase in blood flow there. We all know hip joint isn't, uh, you know, blood supply deep within the hip joint isn't always the best. Um, we found that, you know, doing this for about three to four weeks, her hip flexion and extension active range was within 5%. This was the setting out of everything that her and I did together, uh, where she felt the most dramatic impact. So we were really excited about that. And again, I feel like it's often uh, an overlooked uh, little accessory feature to Wimback. Um, so I really wanted to highlight just how awesome this was for us and how much it improved her um, once we started implementing it into our treatment plan. I have some videos of that set up here. So again, same setup as far as the resistive and the ground adhesives, resistive adhesive over the anterior thigh, ground is still over that left side of her low back. And I have now the capacitive um, mobile head working over the uh, proximal quad tendon. Uh, I even got into the iliacus a little bit too. Um, again, just for the sake of my re-recorded video, uh, I didn't show that, but you can see my parameters. So again, still in the dynamic setting. Now, don't, don't need to be, but again, for what I was trying to do with her, targeting different tissue depths, I really felt like that was most beneficial. I have the swap checked and I'm working at a pretty high level of heat here, 40%. So the way I have these parameters set is this is gonna to toggle from capacitive, so two to three centimeters to deep CET, uh, you know, four to five centimeters to resistive to RET plus, which are gonna be the, the deeper settings. So again, really trying to get blood flowing uh, deep within that hip joint. And... 
So uh, these are just some other things that we started doing as we moved forward in our, uh, you know, more return to sports stuff. So I utilize the bracelets um, and I apologize. I don't have videos of, of these things, but I just listed them here. I'll talk through them quickly. Uh, bracelets coupled with some of my soft tissue techniques, you know, in and around the iliacus, TFL, some other um, parts of the hip that were still super bound down. I uh, use the fascia tool uh, over the quads and the rectus. That was something that was really beneficial for her. So for the new uh, users or the people that, you know, are, are just, you know, learning about Winback, Winback has a fascia tool similar to a, a Graston tool that actually plugs directly into the, the machine that allows the machine to administer the current. A uh, super, super awesome tool um, that I've used for a wide range of patients. Uh, and then we continue to do our active work with that setup that I was showing you guys with those two adhesives, switching more towards isokinetic, high speed activity, hip flexion, extension, abduction, um, even some dynamic stability. Um, I showed a video on a previous call of we have a we're very fortunate we have this uh, it's called a reaxing board in our clinic. Uh, it's basically a you know eight by twelve platform that moves in all different ways. It's super great for dynamic stability. Um, we couple that with the Takar really to promote good lumbopelvic uh, stability. And I have a video, one more video of just a little bit of, this was isokinetic hip flexion we were doing. Again, same setup. Um, it's more of a GIF than a video, but this is uh, this was the idea. So you'd see another great thing about the wind back, um, especially compared to other Takara units on the market is that you got these really long cords here that are super awesome for doing this kind of stuff. So we don't got to worry about the cords catching um, or, you know, getting tangled and stuff like that. So um, another really, really awesome uh, application of this device. And that is all I had for you guys. I'm going to stop my share now.